testing. Testing one, two, three. All right. Hello, internal Lars here, and uh, today I've got a couple of ideas I'd like to share with people out there and um, see if I can get some feedback, general feedback, and hopefully some advice from uh, anyone who may have uh, direct experience or knowledge of um, of the topic here of extracting gold, monatomic gold, from Ormus. So as you know, the powder, which we refer to as Ormus, uh, contains a lot of other stuff, not just, not just the monatomic gold, but what if we actually would like to separate out the gold from the uh, Ormus? So I've got two ideas here about how we could uh, potentially do that. But first, let's talk about uh, two ways that uh, you could potentially uh, separate them out, and then I'll show them to you uh, in detail. So firstly, we know that uh, mercury has an affinity for uh, amalgamating gold, and this is how they've been doing it for a long time. And this is why, unfortunately, the, the uh, environment is um, uh, destroyed a little bit after gold mining why gold mining has a, a very detrimental effect on the environment because we use uh, mercury to uh, separate out the gold. And the other way which uh, could potentially be used, which only one person, I've actually only heard one person uh, talk about this, that's Ken L. Wheeler. Uh, he talked about um, using uh, magnetic uh, inductance to separate, to separate out the gold. Uh, and the same principle, using the same principle that can be elicited by, uh, you know, if you would have a, a long silver pipe and you would drop a magnet down it, the magnet will fall very, very, very slowly because of the inductance, because of the uh, current being induced into the copper and counteracting the fall of the silver, a fall of the uh, magnet. So we could almost do a kind of an inverse of that where we could get a, a long a tube here. Uh, however, this way we'd do it the other way. We'd do it the other way around here. The tube on the right. You'd have a long, a long tube magnet, a neodymium magnet, probably, uh, po uh, hopefully, um, possibly N45 or N50, something uh, quite strong, hollowed out there, and then you would drop the, the powder, the sand or the ormus or whatever down the top. And hopefully the gold should be the um, one that falls the slowest because the gold would be the most conductive. And the gold there uh, should fall the slowest. It, hopefully, uh, I'm thinking it may separate out into different layers. So one might be the gold and then the silver and then the copper and then the platinum, iridium, uh, etc. from most conductive to least conductive least conductive, uh, causing the least uh, inductance and falling the fastest, the gold causing the most inductance and falling the slowest at the top. So that's one idea. Um, the other idea would uh, just, of course, be using the mercury there, the mercury in the, uh, in the almost. So let me know what you um, uh, think of those uh, two ideas there, if you have any inside knowledge about how to do this. Seems like quite a, a secret, uh, very secretive uh, topic. I haven't seen a lot of or heard a lot of people um, talk about this very clearly, except one video there from Ken L. Wheeler, who did mention you could use um, you could use the uh, magnetic flux to actually to actually uh, so if you had a, a slurry of um, you had a slurry containing the gold moving that way coming in a kind of a stream past here, you could actually use the the um, strongest edge of the field here to slow down the gold and um, use some other mechanism to, to carry it away out of the slurry. So he actually mentioned that he was able to build something like that. But I'm wondering, um, would this work? Perhaps I'll build it and find out, but if anyone has any... Uh, uh, inside knowledge, please let me know. Thanks.